Welcome to this week's Winter Art Tidbit, brought to you by Child Care Resources. One idea is to try a salt puff paint. Please use equal parts salt, flour, and water. For example, one cup of each. Whisk it together, add food coloring or tempera paint, put paint mixture into squeeze bottles if you have them available, or plastic bags with a hole cut if you need, or just drip onto the paper using a spoon. Have enough items so each child has their own materials and workspace. Consider different use of materials to paint onto instead of paper, such as recycled cardboard, paper plates, foam, or cardstock. Another fun one is winter tree finger painting. What you'll need here is a sheet of blue paper, non-toxic white paint or finger paint, black marker or black paint and brush. Ideally, you'll need that blue paper, but you can really do any color or even paint it if need be. The blue just helps to create that winter scenery. You'll also need a permanent marker to draw the tree or have the kids make a handprint instead of drawing a tree or have them just draw the tree, you never know. Some white colors and a Q-tip will be used to make snowflakes. Now here's quite a few other painting materials you can use to make this winter scenery. Kids can use sponge brushes cut into a circle shape, daubers, clothespins uh, with cotton wool uh, stuck in the between the little prongs, stamps, or a variety of other materials to make snow. But fingers will always win, as getting messy with your art is the best. Winter cookie cutter prints. This one's great. All you need here is your cookie cutters, your paint, paper, paper plates, or other plate tray to hold the paint. Each child is going to get their own materials. They get to dip that cookie cutter right into the paint, place it on the paper, press it down, and there you go. They've revealed their print. It's great for all ages. A glue resist. Here you're going to use white glue. Squeeze it out of those bottles, um, you're, or you can even paint it on with paint brushes. And then you're going to have paint and your paper, of course. The first step will be to make designs on the paper with the glue and letting it dry overnight. The next day, provide paint for children to now paint onto or over their glue paintings. Another way that you can do this is in a video that we are going to be sharing here shortly that has a crayon resist. Um, and then and, and another way even yet is you can actually use a hot glue gun to make the, the design there if the children are old enough and you have um, adult supervision there. Is it actually magic? It is kind of like magic. So here's your little example of what a snowflake looks like. Could you use your crayons to also draw some snowflakes on that white paper? And then when we paint, they'll appear like magic. Do you think you could make that? And you don't have to make it just like that. You can make it any way you like. I'm going to try to do it like you did. Okay. Maybe in gray because it's a kind of dark color. It's a little bit easier to see, huh? Yeah. Well, that's fine. You could try one in white as well, just to see if it works good for you and if you like it that way. Because you can draw as many as you want for this project. Yeah, white, white doesn't work on lettery white. Mm. You just have to kind of do your best with the drawing the white crayon on the white paper. Um, do what you think would work and then um, it'll it'll still show up. It just doesn't look like it does. Oh, hi. <laughs> Keep going. Are you on the floor? No. So can I do this all in one day? You think it'll take you more than one day? Yeah, I think it does. If I do all of them, then it only takes 1,033. Oh, okay. What shape is that you're drawing? 
It's a, it's a snowflake. It's a snowflake. And what are these lines like? What are they kind of shaped like? Lines. Lines, yeah. I was thinking they kind of look like little arrow points. A little bit, huh? <laughs> Oh yeah, they go. Yep. Now you're using some orange. This is my favorite color. That's fine. You can do whatever colors you like. Am I doing it like you? Yeah, it looks a lot like the one I did. But remember, that's just an example. You get to do it how you like. Mama, hmm? can I not do this one like you did it? Yeah, go ahead. You get to be the picker. It's your art. Actually, it's yours because you bought it. Well, I bought it, but who's getting to do this art? Me. That's right. That means it's now your art. I'm just doing two big ones because I don't want to do it a lot. Okay. Do you want to do another color snowflake or do you only want one on your whole picture? Just one. Okay, so then are you ready to do some painting? After this flake. Okay. Uh, this snowflake is done. Okie doke. Okay, let's put those aside. And there is your water. Wait, where do I paint? Over the whole picture. All right, and we've got... So the sides? Any of it you want. This is your art to do I can what you like. Anywhere I want. You sure can. Now, what colors do you think of when you think of winter colors? Ooh. I think white, but the pictures were. Okay, what else? What other colors like make you think of like iciness? Black. You think black? Okay, if you want to do black, that's Is fine. Is there two blacks? Looks like there's some good dark colors. You know, I was thinking too that blue might be nice. There's a couple oh, that's blues. blue. Is it? Okay. That's blue. Is it? But you get to pick is the important part. So look, I got your brush all the way wet. And now you just dip it in there, swirl it around until the color gets on the brush. Is it on? Yeah, looks like it. And now you just go over where you, um, your snowflake. And you'll see that it won't color your snowflake a different color. It'll keep the same shape and everything underneath it. You need a lot more paint than that. Huh, you got a big picture there. Wait, I have to do it on this whole picture? Well, no, but the the really cool thing is when you do it over the crayon coloring because then you get to see what's called resist art where it doesn't color in the wax of the crayon. It leaves it alone. So do I... Just go right over it, yeah. Go ahead. Here, let me hold Get some more so you can go. I want to see it do the resist. Can you show me? Where do I paint if I do Directly one? on top of your snowflake. Try it. It's going to look really cool. Right over that paint or that crayon coloring. It looks like you're going around the crayon coloring. Try covering it up. I think you might need more paint. Okay. Wait, wait. You can get it wet again. It works best if it's nice and wet. There you go. You want to keep doing black or do you want to try some different colors? I want to keep doing black. Okay. What's happening? It's lighting up. It's lightening up? And it's keeping the color. I told you. It's magic. Now, just for fun, I know you didn't like the idea of doing white before, but do you wanna see what happens when you do white? Just do a little design on the paper with the white and then here, I'll hold that for you. Go ahead. So it looks invisible, right? Did you do a nice little design? All right, here, now put your color in it and see what happens right over where you just did that. Wait, mom. Oh, you weren't done? I apologize. 
go right over it, see what happens. What happened? Keep going, go over that whole spot that you just did. Oh, <gasps> your design appeared, didn't it? That's why I was trying to trick you to make you use the white one and you didn't believe me that you'd be able to see it. Was that a fun trick? I'm gonna try doing it again. Okay. You could be like a spy and it could be your invisible ink. You can use the white crayon to make your design and then only reveal it when you go over it with the watercolor paint. What do you think? And then just for fun, this is only a fun part of the design, but look, when you have the wet paint, watch what happens when I sprinkle some salt on it. Look at that. What? Look what happened with the wet paint when I put some salt in it. It's just on. Oh, it's just on? I like how what it does is it kind of pulls the water to it. Um, so it gives like those spots of dark paint. And it kind of looks like droplets. What do you think? I'm gonna put some on the snowboard. Well, you wanna make sure that it's got nice wet paint on it before you do, otherwise it won't, it'll just go on the paper like it did down there. So you wanna get a little bit of more paint to put on it first and then do your snowflake. And do blue again, or black, I'm sorry. Okay, now go ahead and do a little sprinkle. There you go. Oh, that's a lot of a sprinkle. <laughs> Good job. All right, let's see what happens. That's okay, okay, we'll shake some down. Well, that looks a little bit different, doesn't it? And then at least you can still see that. Yeah, it turned all that salt the gray color. You could still see the orange that you did on your lines, huh? It still resisted it, didn't it? Well, that was pretty fun. Tell me what you just said. So, when, if you put salt on a green dot, uh -huh. that, like that much, and spread it around the green still on. So, it turned the salt flakes the color of the paint. Yeah, and that's those big chunks, see? Ooh, big green chunks. That's cool, you did your own experiment. I like it. All right, yeah. so what is it that we're doing? So. Mm, what is this you're showing me? So, I, found a way that you could actually paint on salt. No way. See? <gasps> That's so cool. But you can only paint like that. Just little dots of it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, see how I made all that just from painting? I do. That's the cool thing about salt. That is the cool thing about salt. That's great, you did a good job. So we're gonna discuss a little bit product art versus process art. So process art is really about the experience. There are no step-by-step -step instructions. There's no sample for the children to follow. There's no right or wrong way to explore and create. The art is focused on the experience and exploration of the techniques, tools, and materials. The art is unique and original. The experience is relaxing or calming. The art is entirely the children's own. The art experience is a child's choice. Ideas are not readily available online. For product-focused art experiences, children will have instructions to follow, much like the examples we've given here today. The teacher will create a sample for children to copy. There's a right and wrong way to proceed, so you should definitely allow for a little bit of creativity. There's a finished product in mind. The children's finished art all looks generally the same. The children might experience some frustration. The teacher might help, you know, try to fix those mistakes to make them look better. The whole class will take part in an art project at the same time or in the same general time. And patterns and examples are readily available online, like 
you know, Pinterest and things like that. Hope you've enjoyed this tidbit. We um, are always looking for fun ways to engage in art activities with our kiddos and um, hope you enjoyed some of the ideas we've shared here. Thank you.